Hey everyone, in this video, we're going to take a look at the Streamlit user interface for the Unified Chat project. On the left, we're going to have any two uh, models chat with one another autonomously. Here, we're going to get uh, GPT-4 Turbo chat with Mixtral 8x7b uh, to try to find a proof for Fermat's last theorem. Let's get this started. I already entered the system messages for both. And here, we can actually choose to talk to anyone. Let's just choose GPT-4 Turbo. Let's just say hi. And here they're going to go for 10 iterations back and forth. And we can say, we can actually change this to Mixtral now. And then we can say, hi, my name, my name is Echo. Let's just say that. And we can, so it keeps track of conversations separately. I can go back to Turbo, continue this conversation, right? I can say here, how are you? And I'll get a response from GPT-4, but then go back to Mixtral and ask, what is my name? So the conversation threads are kept separately. See, your name is Echo. Now I can actually go to Perplexity, which is a search engine, right? It, it actually curates the search results. I can ask, what is the temp like in Paris? So I can get an answer from Perplexity's uh, 70 billion large language model, which curates search results. See, temperature. I can ask, what date did Google release? Gemini, so this is a very recent question, but Perplexity will know it because it's a search engine uh, on December 6, 2023. And this conversation is still ongoing. So we're going to take a look at how we built this. Also going to explore the unified chat one more time. So this is pretty cool. The current models that I incorporated is GPT-4, Mixtral, Perplexity, and Gemini. But you can actually have any models here. By changing the code, you can actually have local models as well. So the class, the unified chat that makes it possible is the unified chatbot class where I initialize and keep memories for each different APIs. I'm currently using OpenAI, Together API, Open Router, Perplexity, and Gemini. Together was giving me some trouble. That's why I didn't include it in the streamlit interface, but it's in the class nevertheless. So we initialize them, right, with our API key, either from an environment variable, or you can enter uh, your key here because get API key function is called here. After that, we have some nice methods like add message trim memory, which will actually keep it under 2500 max memory count. And the chat main, which checks against everything. So essentially, this takes care of everything for you. Okay. So if it checks the names of the, it has the function names, and depending on which we are talking with, it actually gets the response from that model. And like I said, it keeps track of the uh, memory threads, the conversation history separately for each one. As long as this file, as long as this uh, program is running, or as long as the streamlit uh, interface is running, so let's see how we can actually use this class by initializing it and using its methods to build a chat uh, streamlit interface. I also have the terminal versions of these files. You can run these within the terminal just as well. All these files will be available at my Patreon at the AI Architect level. Link will be in the description. I did want to quickly talk about the requirements and how we can run a streamlit app. The requirements are as such. They are listed in requirements.txt. Make sure you are in the right environment you want to be in your terminal. And you can just run the pip install requirements.txt-r command. And, oh, I'm sorry. It's actually pip install-r requirements.txt. And this should install. I currently have it all up to date. I mean, if it is version, so nothing is going to happen. So as, as for running the, uh, the Streamlit app, you can actually type in CLS to clear your terminal. You type in streamlit run, and then the name of the file, right? ST auto LLM chat loop, for example, uh, or, or ST chat with any.py, and it should start and automatically go to the local host. So here is the link, local host. You can actually host it from your computer as well, or you can control click this, and it should take you to that page all the same. If you want to find out more about the unified chat, please refer to my latest video uh, named as unified chat. I'll put a link in the description as well. So let's begin with the uh, uh, chat with any, which allows you to chat with any one of these four models. Now I, I've cleared the code so you can see what's happening. If I were to refresh it, nothing will appear, but this code is running currently in this terminal. Because we're not really putting in a, a streamlit elements uh, currently, we are just initializing a session state. In streamlit, uh, when you've written some script with streamlit elements, anytime you make an interaction, on the streamlit page, this this script runs from start to finish again. So therefore, it will clear all your variables, any kind of history which you wanted to store, like chatbot message history or something like that. Therefore, you need to 
initialize them in your session state so they don't get you know cleared out every time you make an action. That's why we are initializing a chatbot. If it's not in the sd.session state, we initialize it as our unified chatbot, which is the class we are importing, importing from the unified chat file, which we just looked at. And then next up is to define the API types. This is just a dictionary. If we were to rerun this, we still are not going to see anything. This is just a dictionary key corresponding to a tuple. But in our next, next lines of code, we get the API type and model name from the sd.select box. Now, if you run it, we see that the select box is appearing and it is populated with the values of the list of the API types.values and it uh, maps it with a lambda function. Then this is what we are drawing our information from this uh, dictionary. So now we can actually select any, any one of them. So this will select the API type and the model name for us, right? Because our class, the unified chat, is using both an API type, such as OpenAI, Open Router, Perplexity, and a model name, such as Mixtral, Perplexity 70 billion online, or GPT4 Turbo. Next up is to display the chat history. Now, currently, if you were to refresh this, you're not going to see any difference because we don't have anything in our history. But as you can see, we would loop over the session state chatbot.memories model name because we are keeping track of the histories for each model separately and then we would use s with sd.chat message i'll explain what this is and then we sd.markdown write it down so chat message is a new element which was introduced to streamlit a few months back and it does take in the role as the uh, user in the system whatever role really is and it will use the first letter of that role that you give as the uh, indication for the chat message the little icon that shows up so next up is the take in user input we just simply take in user input with sd chat input say something and right here because it's a chat input it appears at the bottom and whatever you type here will actually appear as the placeholder as you can see it says say something because this says say something next up is the if we if we if a user entered something then we again use with sd.chat message user and we write that message to the screen and uh, we do initialize the getting of the response from the model with sd.status waiting for a response and then we wait for the response. We use the chatbot's chat main uh, method, which is in the class. We send the user input and the model name. And then when it becomes available, we write it to the screen. Let's see how this works. If I say hi, you see this hi is printed with this. And then this waiting for response indicator started. And then when it became available, we wrote it right here. I believe if you, okay, here's the thing. If, if, you're, if your chat message is user or assistant, you're going to get these nice little icons. If it's something else, then it's going to use the first letter of whatever you're using. At least that's how I understand it. And this waiting for response uh, waits here, appears here. And I think you can, maybe you, you can kind of hack it to clear it, but I think this also can contain things such as if your chat includes such as browsing or some kind of code generation, you can actually include them here. So that's kind of nice. Sort of like what the code interpreter or currently known as a data anal analyst does in the chat GPT interface. So next up is a button to clear the history. So see? sd.button clear chat history, which will sd.session state chatbot memories model name. It will set to an empty uh, list. If you click that, we should clear it. And that's it. So this will run our chat with any one of the models, keeping track of the memories or the conversation history separately. Like I said, all these code files, in, including the terminal versions and the streamlit version, will be available at Patreon at AI architect level, including the unified chat class. Link is in the description. As you can see, a mixture and OpenAI event added. I don't know if they approved for months last year I'm red. Let's check out the last message. You're most welcome. I mean, they did reach some kind of conclusion. They started thanking one another, but nevertheless, they ran for 10 iterations. We got GPT-4 and mixture was talking to one another. So if you were to refresh this, I have removed much of the code. You can see again, we get a blank screen because we initialized the chatbots but as the unified chatbot in our session state and we have defined our uh, dictionary, but nevertheless, we haven't created anything yet. Now here, we are going to add an API type one and API type two with sd.select box by listing them. As you can see, so now we can actually select, let's say, and select both of them as mixture or any kind, in any combination. And then next up is a create the input box uh, for a system message. So if we were to run this, say enter a system message for mixture. This, this changes dynamically, as you can see. So if you wanted to enter a system message, you can do it like this. We're using the st.txt input. And this is the second one. If you refresh, that's, that should appear here. And the next up is to take in user chat input because it's a chat input. It appears at the bottom. And like we said, you can have an F string here as the placeholder. Here it says enter a user message on behalf of the first model 
whatever you selected as your first model, right? Because this is going to be the conversation starter. So in essence, you select the first model and then the second model, enter their respective system messages or leave them blank if you like. And now you have to enter a, a message to get it started. And this will, this will simulate GPT-4 sending this message to Mixtral and then the conversation will begin. Next up is a slider. Let's refresh this again. I, here's the min value is one, max value is 10, but you could really set it to anything you like. And just be careful of, be mindful of token usage. All the mixed drill from open router is currently free, but it might not remain so in the near future. The next one is to check if you have a user message, if user had entered something over here, right? You can select the number of iterations here. And then, and then we are starting to add the messages because so we are, we, keep, we are keeping track of a single message history for both. So we are entering it as an assistant message because our first message is going to go to GPT-4 Turbo as an assistant message. And then Mixtral is going to receive it as a user message. And then it's going to return something, which is going to seem like a user message to GPT-4. And then we enter the iterations. And iterations is determined by this slider. And then we just respectfully, I mean, res respectively update their, we send the messages, receive the user message. We are continually updating the user message. The first user message is whatever we enter here. And then the next time it is whatever the first model, the second model responds. And then it becomes the response of the other model. And we, as we receive the messages, we actually put them to the screen, as you can see. And when we call the chatbot.chat main from our SD.session state, which we have initialized all the way at the top right here, all the, uh, so all the history, all the addition to the history chatbot history is going to be handled by the chat main method so and by the uh, unified chat class so no problems there that's about it and then we just have a clear history button so therefore we can just select for example mixtral with mixtral and just enter anything here and they'll just keep talking so i'm gonna i'm select i've selected mixtral or both and then i put their system messages as you are a commentator in the state of ai research for both of them i have a typo but shouldn't matter i set iterations to three and then ask what do you think of the state of ai research and llms so here we go mixtral they say open router says they improved the speed of mixtral almost like 8x so it's pretty fast so they're just going to keep talking so this message goes to the next mistral and they just have a nice conversation that's about it I hope you enjoyed this. Like I said, all the code files will be available at Patreon. And if you're enjoying my videos, you can visit my website, echohive.live, and you can actually search for different topics you're interested in, such as Autogen or, for example, Vision API. And you can, you can find the videos that you're looking for. If you're a patron, you can also find the code download links, and you can just download them right from my Patreon. Also check out my GPT Masterclass which covers uh, a lot of topics is the older OpenAI library, the new library, vision and speech examples, quite a lot of stuff about assistance, instructor, and also some additional projects. You can also visit CodeHive where you can find uh, 900 plus free Python, applica Python applications, which are GPT chat applications. You can just click on whatever you're looking for. You can browse, right? You can search. And when you find somebody you like, something you like, you click on it. Here's the code. You can copy it. Sometimes some of them have some small bugs, but you can fix them easily. They are AI generated. I'm actually going to redo this entire thing. You can also, if you wish, if you like this apps, you can download them all from my Patreon by uh, clicking it. It's currently $100. That's about it. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.